began in 2007, which was following an action brought uh, against two owners of one horse, where there'd been a terrible accident at Wolverhampton Racecourse, where an assistant trainer, Chris Kinnan, was kicked in the head uh, by a passing horse belonging to uh, with another trainer. Um, and that caused him life-changing injuries and an action was brought against all involved the racecourse and it also went through to the owners. There is an act little known but nevertheless there called the Animals Act 1971 which says that strict liability applies to the ownership of an animal and strict liability means there doesn't have to be any negligence involved or anything like that and specifically to the owner as well as the keeper or the care of the horse. So an owner, a racehorse owner, an absentee owner if you like, is just as liable as the care as the trainer. And this action was brought against two owners um, by the family of Chris Canan. Quite understandably, it was life-changing and was going to cost a huge amount to care for him for the rest of his life. And one of the owners happened to have insurance to cover this and the other didn't. And it was on the front page of the Racing Post and caused a, a lot of discussion. Uh, we had been in discussion uh, a little with the ROA over this when the Animals Act or the implications of the Animals Act had become, we'd become aware of it. Uh, but this really kicked it off and, and we then set up a scheme which became part of, a, of the membership. So it was a benefit of the membership, which means that every racehorse owner who's a member of the association has this liability cover and they can sleep easy. Um, not particularly, with 8,000 members, the unit cost for something like this becomes relatively small and therefore it's a very small fraction of the membership fee that goes towards this, liable, uh, this liability cover. Um, it's a very valuable thing to have. It may not, hopefully, need to be used very often, but when it does need to be used, it'll be millions. It covers the liability of an owner for any actions that the animal that they own um, is, is held liable for. So if that animal uh, gets loose, causes a road traffic accident or kicks somebody as it did it, uh, at Wolverhampton and there is an action for damages brought against the owners of that horse, this covers them for that, unless there's any other more specific insurance in place which will cover it in, in the first place. So this is really the fallback position when the claim is very large, when the accident has been very catastrophic. This is a fallback position that will give those owners the cover, not just for any awards that are, that are, that are any damages that are awarded, but also for the cost of defence, which of course can be colossal. Well, it is only the ROA member that this insurance will protect. The, the liability follows the horse and whatever the damages are awarded uh, will follow the owners of that horse. If there are two owners, it's likely that the damages awarded would be expected to be split 50-50 between those two owners. So the owner who was a member of the association without any other insurance uh, would be liable for 50% of the damages awarded and the uninsured owner would be liable for it themselves. Uh, it, it does cover horses out of training providing they're on, on a break or on a rest and recuperation. Provided there is intention that they return to training, they are covered. It also covers horses that are being prepared to go into training, so yearlings from the sales that are being broken or being get, got ready for a breeze up sale, it does cover those. So if the intention is to race either initially or to race again, then there is cover. So if a horse is injured and off even for a year, but the intention is to race again, then they're covered. The onus of proof of this intention is on the owner. The owner would have to prove that there was a reasonable expectation that the horse would return to training as opposed to retiring or going off to be retrained for another job. Well, they should really take out their own specific insurance. It's much more of a commercial activity then when there is a syndicate or a club and it's regarded in law 
uh, as more of a commercial activity and less of a hobby. This cover is really, the ROA cover is designed for people who own horses as their hobby, as their fun. Um, if they're part of a syndicate or, or, or part of that, then it's always well, 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 or part of a club, it's worth checking that the club or the syndicate does have their own specific insurance. So that really is the best way to do it. Well, if they become aware, they should do uh, nothing specific uh, to that to, to respond to it, other than to let whoever's written the letter, probably a solicitor's letter, know that they've passed it on to Weatherby's Hamilton, who are administering the claim. So, in short, if if, so, if an owner gets something, they should pass it straight on to Weatherby's Hamilton and simply acknowledge it. There shouldn't be any denial or acceptance of liability. That will be left to the insurers and their lawyers to deal with.